The case of the man dubbed Metal Fang is extraordinary in many ways. The facts and details of the case still lies buried beneath the curtain that was once put up by the Soviet Union. Because back in the late 70s and early 80s, there were plenty of serial killers roaming the landscapes of the Union. But the existence of them were denied, as such killers were said to only be a part of Western decadence. Today we know better, and while many of the details of the case of Nikolai Smagaliev is cloaked in rumors and speculation, I am determined to tell the tale of Metal Fang. He was charismatic, a natural entertainer of sorts. He had moved to Alma-Ata, located in Kazakhstan in the 70s, and if there was something he loved doing it was showing off his culinary skills to his friends and colleagues. His name was and is Nikolai Smagaliev, a hard name to pronounce, but that hasn't stopped me from trying before. He held a handful of different jobs growing up in the Soviet Republic, Nothing really fancy or exciting. According to some sources, he was somewhat of a ladies' man. He could pick up any girl he wanted to, but then again, the truth of those accounts is questionable. Questionable accounts is going to be a recurring theme of today's video. And to spare your guessing, I'm going to let you know when those pop up. One thing we know for sure about Nikolai was that he was a charming man. Something that made him all the more dangerous to those around him. He also had an odd feature, a result of a fight he had once gotten into. You see, Nikolai had gotten two of his front teeth knocked out during a fight, and he had chosen to replace them with two metal teeth, said to have been sharpened by himself. But no one looked his way when women started turning up dead and mutilated by a nearby river. Clearly someone was preying and hunting on people. But any details of what he had done to them was kept concealed to the public. No one wanted to admit that a monster was among them. But a monster certainly was there. A monster that would be dubbed Metal Fang, for the teeth of metal he used to consume the flesh of his victims. Nikolai loved hunting, an activity he shares with many people across the world, but his favorite prey wasn't elk or moose or wolves, it was humans. To be specific, it was women. He had a seething hatred for them within himself, and he didn't claim to kill for his own gratification, but to cleanse the world of loose and immoral women. Although the details of his grisly murders tells a different story. It all started in 1979. Nikolai was tailing a woman walking along a park at night. At some point during his stalking activity, he acted on what the predatory part of his mind was telling him. To attack. He jumped the woman and started stabbing her. Like a wild animal, he went into a frenzy. After several stabs, he calmed himself and felt aroused. He wanted to humiliate any resemblance of humanity these women bore 
and to catch two birds with one stone, he decided to shove his erect penis into one of the stab wounds he had created. He went on to penetrate the wound, something he clearly did for his own gratification and satisfaction. Once it was done, he pulled his knife out again and sliced off a chunk of her butt and of her thigh. Then he brought the chunks home with him and cooked it. It's said that one of his favorite foods to make out of human flesh was dumplings. He was, after all, a very skilled chef, and he loved inviting people to his home and served them dinner. According to some questionable accounts, he served many of his guests human flesh, although he himself has later claimed that he saved the human meat for himself. He said that one human could last him a month. He later extended upon this claim, saying that this was the reason he killed one woman per month. Time went on, and more women turned up dead, dumped on the killer's now favorite dumping ground, by the river. All of them bore signs of severe mutilation. Some of them had their heads ripped off, some of them had their entrails ripped out. The killer had even been drinking their blood, but many of them bore signs of rape. Specifically, post-death rape. A really sick fuck was responsible, but apparently it was easy being a serial killer in the Soviet Union. It was now December of 1980, and the seventh mutilated corpse would be found on the riverbank. Her head had been hacked off and her gut had been sliced open and her entrails had been ripped out. She also had chunks carved off. You might have noticed I said 7th victim. Yeah, well, the actual number of victims that Nikolai is responsible for is very likely much higher, but those 7 are the ones that has been proven. It was after this December 1980 victim that Nikolai decided to invite two locals back to his home. He was going to cook them a nice dinner, only a few days after the murder had occurred. The trio sat by the dinner table and they all seemed to have a good time. One of the guests wanted to fill his drink up and was going to walk to the kitchen, but Nikolai stopped him in his tracks and told him to sit down. He was going to fetch the drink for the man. For some reason Nikolai didn't want the men to be in the kitchen, but at some point during the evening Nikolai had to go outside to fetch some logs. It was when he was outside that one of the two men once again needed a refill. The man got up and staggered into the kitchen where he opened the fridge. What he saw in the fridge struck him like a lightning bolt. He was nauseous and gripped with terror. Inside the fridge was a decapitated head of a woman, her dead eyes staring at him, sitting on a plate and there was also entrails that looked blue and grey, coated in a layer of blood stuffed into the fridge. The man ran in shock to his friend and they ran as fast as they could away from Nikolai's house. Shortly thereafter, Nikolai was caught. Nikolai wasn't an ordinary criminal for the interrogation officers. He was a lot more eager and willing to share all the grisly details of what he had done. And once he started yapping, he didn't stop. The following quote comes directly from Nikolai himself. It's what he told the interrogators when he was asked about his first murder. I always loved to hunt. Often went hunting. But this was my first time hunting a woman. When I went out on the Usun Hagach Maibulak track, I saw some young peasant woman. She was alone. I felt my heart pound within me and I ran after her. Hearing my footsteps, she turned around. But I caught up with her and put my arm around her neck, dragged her to the side of the landfill. She resisted, and then I cut her throat with a knife. Then I drank her blood. At this point, people from the village appeared by the bus factory. I laid down on the ground and crouched next to the murder site. While I was lying there, my hands got cold. When the bus drove by, I warmed my hands on the woman's body and stripped her naked. I cut the corpse's breast into strips, removed the ovaries, separated the pelvis and hips. I then folded these pieces into a backpack and carried them home. I melted the fat to fry with, and some parts I pickled. Once I put the parts through a meat grinder and made dumplings, I saved the meat for myself. I never served it to anyone else. 
Twice I grilled the heart and the kidneys. I grilled meat too, but it was tough. And I had to cook it for a long time. And it had to have its own fat. The meat of this woman took me a month to eat. The first time I ate human flesh took power. But then I got used to it. Nikolai did have a very strict sense of what an immoral woman was. To him all she needed to be was blonde. He also classified women who swore as immoral and deserving of his sadism. And of course the old classic, women who had premarital sex. So that was the end of Metal Fang. He was charged for 7 murders, but told people he had committed between 50 to 100 murders. But don't go yet, the story actually goes on from here. Most serial killers except for Ted Bundy usually have their run, and once they're caught they never get out again. The year was 1989, and he was being transported to another facility when he jumped the guards and knocked them out. He was on the run for two years, hiding out in the Ural Mountains. After two years, however, he got sick of being on the run, so he thought he would commit a smaller offense under a false name, so that he could be imprisoned for a short time in the local jail, and then be able to live out life there with his new identity. But the police officer he spoke to there was suspicious of Nikolai. Therefore, he contacted a police officer situated in another town, a police officer who knew about Metal Fang. All the police officer needed was a glimpse, and Nikolai was once again arrested. He's not sure whether he murdered anyone during his time on the run, but he is clearly fucking sick in the head, since he was shipped to a mental facility after his recapture, and there was unsolved murders during his time roaming free. Unsolved murders bearing similarity to those he had committed 10 years earlier. Now here, is when it gets muddy, because I have read four different accounts on what became of Nikolai after his rearrest in 1991. One source said that he was released and deemed cured in 2001. Another source said he was deemed cured and released in 2011, but at the same time many sources claimed he escaped again in 2015 and that he is still on the run as of 2019. But those claims have at the same time said to have been disclaimed because they were only a rumor started by a woman on Facebook and that he is still locked up in a mental facility and that he has been there since 1991. A fucking mess. It's a fucking mess. But then again, when Nikolai escaped in 1989, law enforcement kept it quiet until he was recaptured in 1991. No one even knew that he had been on the run until he was captured again. So, in conclusion, maybe, just maybe, Metal Fang is out there somewhere, right now. Maybe he moved to another country. Maybe he lives near you. <laughs>